Hey, so this part I was thinking about maybe we could model the the top top engine hood. It does if we just look take a quick look at our top view, there are a couple more like little vent type things. Just a little bit more detailed than say on the roof or door that we've been modeling before. But we're just gonna keep the same concepts in mind that we've been learning throughout the entire entire series so far. And uh we'll take we'll tackle this. Before we jump into modeling, I did just want to, I know it may seem like it's getting kind of repetitive at this point, but uh, talk a little bit about topology and a good edge flow. This is our low poly base model. So it, it basically serves as a foundation for everything we do later, modeling the details, uh, adding the textures and materials, and then re if we were to do that. So having this this first step done neatly, done taking taking our time and get it done right, uh, really ensures the rest of the process goes by smoothly and uh, nice and good. So that's why we're taking so much time getting this first step um, done right. I know it may seem like it's kind of slow, but we do just want to make sure that we take our time and do this the right way. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk about topology. It really is the, mo the most important thing I want you to get from this first part. So I downloaded uh, a couple images just to look at some different types of topology, just to further emphasize further emphasize that point. So here we have our first example. Now topology is basically made up of topology is shapes, and there has to be a balance between the shape of the overall vehicle that we're making and the polygon shapes within that that make that model up. So here in this model, this does a great job of getting the general shape of the vehicle right. You can obviously tell that it's a Corvette. Uh, all the edges on it are nice and sharp, it's like like here, and the the top of the fenders you can. They're nice and sharp and clean. But if we look at some of these, these uh, internal shapes, such as right above the fenders, we can see that there's a lot of triangles. And like I mentioned earlier, these sort of disrupt the edge flow. So we couldn't have an edge loop that goes through here. The triangles mess that up. And a lot of these triangles are easy fixes. Like th these two triangles could easily be made into a quad. That wouldn't disrupt the edge flow. I'm not going to spend too much time on these, so let's move on to the next one. Here, this model does kind of the exact opposite. It's actually done in Blender. Uh, if we look over here at this, these, these two views right here, without the things, it's, you can't... It's kind of clumpy, which isn't a adjective you would normally use to describe a car. So you do want to make sure that your edges are neat and clean as well as the geometry inside. Like I mentioned, the uh, grid pattern, this sort of follows that, but it doesn't do so in a neat manner to get the, to, to define, define the shape of the car. Here's another example. So here, it's uh, everything's done fairly correct, um, just pretty messily. Uh, in some areas, you can see that there's the grid pattern. It is a little bit dense. Um, if you're making a low-poly base mesh, you want to try to keep everything as um, minimalist as possible, to, just to make it easier to work with on yourself. So this might be a little bit dense to get clean shapes with, and especially here in the headlight, you can see that this little lens area. There's a, a bit of a crazy triangle action going on. Uh, and same here in this, this, the wheel well area. There's a lot of triangles that disrupt that geometry. And here's some really good examples. So this car, the edges on the car are nice and uh, nice and sharp. You can easily tell. And the, the inter internal geometry is really neat and follows that square grid. Here's another great example. Uh, this just goes to show that it's not a perfectly 
perfectly square grid, but it is still very neat. If we zoom in, even when there are little cutouts for these sensor areas, there it, it does so in a manner that doesn't disrupt the geometry of the entire car. It doesn't disrupt that edge flow. And here's a pretty complex example. Um, for most of the car, it is very neat. Again, it's a little dense, but um, this is probably with the subsurface modifier, which just adds more geometry. But even on this car that's probably done by a professional, you can see that if we zoom into some of these more complex areas where there's cutouts, the geometry starts to get a little crazy. And even just this one small triangle would disrupt that entire edge loop. And this is just the same thing, just the rear view. And the same thing can be said just around the model. In general, very neat and clean, but we, ha we do want to pay attention to these small details that can disrupt the entire edge loop if we let it. <laughs> so hopefully that was just a little bit helpful to get a better idea of what good versus bad topology looks like and some tips to maintain good topology or fix bad topology. So we'll just uh, model this uh, front engine hood real quick. Like I said, it is a little bit more complex, but we'll, we'll have it done in no time. What I'm going to do is just select these vertices at the top of our top of the fender and just extrude them all the way across. And just sort of line them up with that. And um, we'll have to add some edge loops across here. Control R. We'll add one here to get the, the outer the outer edge for the end of the hood. And then we'll add maybe two in between here just to round it off a little bit. And then also what we have to do is bring it up because engine hood doesn't stay that low. So we'll just start to navigate these edge loops and we'll actually do it from our front view, just something like this. Just give it a nice rounded uh, surface. And um, before we start uh, modeling in these vents and stuff, uh, I'll just we'll create the create the back of it real fast. So this is area can get a little bit tricky uh, just because we want to make sure that we get the shape of the hood right, but it's also trying to meet up with the top of the fender and then also this this pillar here. So it can get a little tricky, but we'll just go at it. Start now getting these in place. And what we could do is you know what? Actually we're going to add one more edge loop through this. Just to bring it up a little bit like that, which may be a little dense, but I do want to fill in this face. And uh, maybe that's not what I want to do. Hold on one second. I'm just going to go back a few steps to get rid of that uh, edge loop. Don't add. Uh, hmm. What do I want to do? Actually, yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm going to add an edge loop down here, fill in that face, and yeah, we'll just leave it like that for now. We'll fill this little section in later, because um, it's not part of the hood, it's just where the hood sort of connects to. So we'll do that in a little bit. I just need want to give it some time to um, think of a clean way to do that. Uh, so let's just model these, uh, we'll model the little vents and hood scoop on the 
the top, the top of the engine hood. Let's take a look at an image real fast just to see what's going on here. And so the engine scoop comes up and has this big old vent in the middle and these two ones on the side look like they dip down into the engine hood a little bit. So uh, let's start rearranging some geometry um, in order to be able to model these. We'll start with the two ones on the side. Oh, got my wisdom teeth taken out yesterday and it kind of hurts, I'm not going to lie. So hopefully I'm not talking too weird. But we do need some extra geometry in here to uh, be able to have to model these. I'm just going to edge slide this one over to this uh, left side. Maybe just slide in s some of these vertices into place according to that this U outline. And we'll add in one more edge loop uh, across the top to make that line. Let me maybe sort of bring this one down a little bit. And just slide things into place. Remember, slide is GG. Oh, I just realized the entire time these keys weren't on. So hopefully I didn't miss too much things by not turning that on. Um, so we're just going to play with this a little bit to try to get this to match the outline of this that shape. Once again, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be super perfect because we just want to make sure that it's neat. That's probably good enough, actually. Maybe move this one down a little bit. This one down a little bit to match it up. So here's what we're going to do to create this shape. I'm actually just going to straight up delete these vertices. Because these are the ones that go dip down. So I'm going to delete those vertices. There might be a different different way to do this. Well, there definitely is a different way to do this. This is the way that I always go about doing it. Um, so since, if we just take a look at our reference picture one more time, sort of the front of this goes down the furthest, and then it comes back up towards the same level as the engine hood as it gets to the to the rear. So what I, well, this is how I do it. We actually just select these four vertices, just rotate around a little bit, Maybe even go to our side view and just extrude it down using the uh, Z key to lock that. Just extrude it down a little bit. And we can use the S key to scale it in just to give it a little bit of um, fade, sort of fade into that new depth. And then, well, then what we can do is we'll fill in that uh, quad there. And we're actually just going to use a couple, two triangles to. and to sort of level it out. And we do something like that. Now these triangles do disrupt an edge loop across here, which we might add in later. Uh, but uh, those two triangles don't, don't disrupt very much. And they also disrupt this, uh, the edge loop across here. It sort of just cuts it in half. So, But it is the best way to sort of get that shape to fade up into the hood without adding too much crazy geometry. So we're just going to keep that there and then if we need to fix it later, we will. But that that's a probably the easiest way to model in those little vent dips things, vent dip thing whatever you want to call them. So now we'll go ahead and model the uh, the hood scoop which sort of follows a start uh, just repeat the process that we did to these side vents sort of navigate these vertices into place using the slide function just gg maybe something like that to follow that outer outline and i do want to take a little one more so we get we get some crazy looking so it goes up but it also stays level that doesn't make sense right now, but uh, I'll show you what I mean. So maybe I can move that back a little bit and that back just to match that. And uh, we're probably going to be using triangles again. Uh, so right now, I want to extrude. Actually, it didn't 
take into consideration this rear portion up here. Uh, maybe we can move these back a little bit. Or maybe just add another edge loop. Um, mm. Let me just think about this for a sec. I'm going to delete this face that we added in earlier, and then also this edge loop. Um, what I'm doing here is at the bottom, we get we have these three different select modes. Uh, I don't use them too often, but I just thought I'd mention it. This first one down here, you can select the different vertices. This one you can select different edges, and then this last one. Whoop, this last one you can select different faces. Uh, I'm just going to select this entire edge loop using Shift Alt A and click X. I'm not going to delete the vertices. I just wanted to delete the edge loop. And that was just sort of faded out. It's the way we had it before, and I want to add an edge loop back here, somewhere towards the top, because this. Uh, I'm trying to get this this thing to go like that. I'm following trying to follow that outline all the way through. So I'm just trying to think of the best way to do that. Actually, I have an idea. This might a little teach us something new. I'm not entirely entirely sure of the geometry it'll give us. Yeah, it'll give us a triangle, uh, but I think it'll be fine for now. I will fix it later. So I just want to show you a new tool as well. So I'm following this line here, and this vertice should basically meet up with this one here. So what we want to do here is sort of merge these two vertices. So this is a cool tool. Um, sometimes you can get some weird results with it, but Alt-M is the merge tool. So I want to merge this, this top vertice up here with this one. So I'm going to select this top one first and this uh, bottom one ladder. Click Alt-M and merge them at the last vertice selected. And then just repeat the process for this one as well. So now we follow that. Uh, how do I draw? Now we follow that line nice, nicely. Um, but we do have this one triangle here. We'll fix that uh, shortly. And sort of what I want to do for this hood scoop, I'm going to go into face select mode and select all these faces behind the actual vent opening within that um, I'm just going to select those vertices and then I think we might have already have brought it up a little bit but we'll extrude all of these vertices upwards if we go to our side view we can kind of see what we want to do here and this might look kind of weird, especially towards this the back section. Um, now we'll sort of fade it into the hood, because right now it's just a straight up 90 degree angle that goes up. So I'm going to select, um, let's start with this, this back portion. Uh, we'll do, make some more triangles. I know, I know I'm being a bad example here. But um, I want this to be a triangle to sort of fade into the same same thing, so we'll merge that vertice to the bottom, and then just sort of bring, then just sort of work our way along here to bring that down a little bit. Same with these ones, and just sort of bring this entire back piece down. kind of hard to tell um, I extruded that up a little bit way too much you GG that back and then to fade this entire thing I'm going to uh, shift alt right click a couple times to select these vertices 
I'm just gonna GG and that'll sort of fade it. Maybe I'll do one at a time. So this one we want to slide it inwards, something like that. And these vertices uh, we want to slide back something like something like that. Maybe these ones don't have to go in that far, uh, far actually. Let's use the X. Dragging along the X. So we get something looking like something like looking like this. Wow, that was weird. Um, and now what I want to do for these, we kind of want to do it something like that, but that is not a, not a good idea to do that way that I just did. Actually, what we'll do is we'll delete this vertice. I mean, this entire face that makes up the the front of that scoop, because technically it is a vent, so it is a hole. And then what we want to do is we want to... I'm just going to open up this reference picture one more time. Throw it on my second monitor. Um, I'm just trying to think about what I want to do here. Yeah, this is a little bit of a complicated shape. So we're going to use another new tool, and that's the knife tool. Uh, this is going to make a bunch of triangles that will disrupt our geometry. But since we're trying to keep it low poly right now... Um, let's see, where does this come to? Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to add an edge loop. I'm going to add an edge loop across this entire thing. And then maybe use our brush select, which is C, to... Um, just round that out a little bit. Because this, uh. I want it to come down to around here. I don't want it to go all the way to the end of the hood. So, what I'm going to do to create this shape is I am going to fill in that, uh, this triangle here. I'm actually going to delete this face as well. Am I? Actually, no, I'm not. Just kidding. Um, I want to fill in that triangle there. And then, in order to get the. Because right now this is just a one-sided triangle, and we do want to be able to... Um, the triangle is facing out this way that we're looking right now. And to add a face on the other side, I want to do something... Actually, I'm going to delete this. Hold on, give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'm just going to... I'm going to use a knife tool to do this. Oh. It opens up. The, the knife tool looks like this. And we just select different... We can select any point on the mesh. You have to be careful with uh, the knife tool because you can easily just do some stupid cut that disrupts, that creates so many more problems than it actually answers. So I want to select this vertice here, this little green square, and just sort of bring it up to around here. And then I just click Enter to confirm that cut. Then I'm going to delete that face, that triangle that we made fill in that triangle and fill in that triangle and just make sure this vertice comes out something like something like that so this uh, is kind of messy uh, it, it does get the shape of the car that we are going for but um, it disrupts that entire edge loop across that front of the hood, which we might need to fix later. And, an, oh, here's another good trick. So, to have a good topology, not that we've had a lot of good topology this, um, this section with all the triangles, but... So for little cutouts like this, this front of the um, hood scoop, a great idea is to, if we want to have an edge loop that goes around this entire thing. So I'm just going to extrude this and scale it in, uh, maybe a little bit, scale across the Z axis. Scale it down, something like this. Now it is uh, very, very subtle. Um, 
especially now. But now we have an edge loop that goes across, that goes around, I should say. It goes around that entire cutout. Maybe we can do the same thing for the uh, these ones up here. Let me just move that into something like this. And uh, try to... Grab the shape of this vent cutout area thing here. And actually, what we'll do for, for this is we'll use the inset tool. It's pretty similar to the extrude tool when you're using it in this manner. But an inset tool basically just creates the same shape within that shape. So I'm going to make something maybe a little bit smaller, maybe something like this. And then we'll just sort of navigate this into the shape that we want. Some similar close anyways maybe something like that and we'll just delete that face now we do technically have this loop around it but I do want to add one more um, just extrude scale inwards a little bit something like that so now we have an edge loop around that cutout which is uh, the same sort of concept that we're going to be using for when we model in the windshields and stuff uh, once we have that entire thing. Oh, I do have this one, but uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna sort of try to put this in the. No, nah, that's fine, that's fine. Maybe bring this one in a little bit. It does seem kind of squarey right now because obviously this vent has rounded corners and stuff. Uh, same with this front one, but trying to keep it simple it conveys the shape um, and I think it looks pretty good oh let's fill this back in um, let's fill this in now how long have we been doing this um, time isn't necessarily an issue but I don't want to record for so long oh wow we have been recording for a long time man time flies dang this has been half an hour already um, all right I'm gonna add an edge loop here to the same thing that we did before and I think this actually works out uh, a lot better now that we have this extra thing up there. I'm going to film that face. Is that what I want to do? I'm just going to try some stuff out real quick. Um, yeah, that's what I want to do. Now oh, we have this crazy looking shape in here. Oh, this is kind of complicated. Oh, shoot. So I do want to film this and this maybe I'll have one more edge loop across here two, three, four, two, and we'll have that triangle I'm trying to, can't oh, it's kind of messy looking, oh shoot, yeah maybe this can come up a bit Alright, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm going crazy. Wow, I'll probably end up re-recording -re 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 this because this took so long. But I'm going to save this for now. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you learned something. We are getting into a little bit more complicated shapes. Um, we should get more interesting. Um, a bit more difficult, but more interesting nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Laters.